my third live stream coming at you from the Bahamas. I'm at the Viva uh, Fortuna Resort and loving it. It's an all-inclusive resort. Everything is taken care of, so really happy. Had a great day staying here five nights. Uh, so I'm gonna try this live stream again. Hopefully it works. If you're watching this, let me know if the connection is good. I was just struggling the past few minutes to try to get this Wi-Fi connection. I'm right next to the router. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the fundamental strategies to succeed with travel points. And the most important part about this is I'm going over a sustainable strategy so that you could get more credit cards, more points over the long term, not just in it for the short term gain. So, um, I'll give one more minute. I'll give you guys a little update of what's going on with my current vacation before I get started. Let some people join the live stream. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm at the Viva Wyndham uh, Fortuna Resort. It costs 15,000 Wyndham points per night. And the great thing about Wyndham points is that it's a flat rate. No matter what hotel you go to, it could be $70 per night or it could be $330 per night. It's always going to be 15,000 points per night. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so um, that's the way I was able to get a lot of value out of this redemption and unfortunately Wyndham is changing up their whole program and they're gonna supposed to make it three tiers so it's not always gonna be at 15,000 points per night rate uh, so all right let's get started in the content that I prepared for you today so the first step to creating a fundamental uh, strategy to succeed with travel points would be I just wanted to spell a myth first so that is to always pay your credit cards in full every single month to some of you it seems like a basic thing and you know you should be doing that anyway and the reason why I wanted to dispel this myth is because ever since, uh, since I was in high school, some people were telling me that if you get a credit card, you should not pay the balance in full every single month. Hey, what's up, Ty Taylor? Um, yeah, so you should not pay the credit card in full and have a little bit of a balance and somehow that's going to boost your overall credit score. That's a complete myth. Just pay your credit card in full every single month and don't get involved with credit cards if you plan on getting in debt. All right, so just going over my notes here. I wrote these on the beach for you guys. Um, hey, what's up, Dwayne? Uh, from How to Build Credit TV. Glad you stopped by. All right, so the next fundamental strategy is to always meet the minimum spending for the credit cards that you're going for and basic but it's important to nail the mentals with anything so um, when I first started getting credit cards and travel points this might have been back in 2011 I applied for the Chase Sapphire preferred card and I think back then it might have been 3,000 or 4,000 minimum spend in three months and I didn't complete the minimum spending I had no idea how to do manufactured spending at the time I had no idea what I was doing in general so the most important lesson here is to always Know how you're going to complete the minimum spending before applying for a credit card. If you have big purchases coming up, if your family has big purchases coming up, then um, you know you could plan your credit card strategy that way. This way, you'll be able to complete the minimum spending because that the the uh, sign up bonuses are gold. You know the banks are just getting stricter and stricter with their rules and regulations to approve you for their credit cards. So, uh, you know, with American Express, you're only allowed to get the sign-up bonus once in your entire life. So you gotta make sure that you're able to get that sign-up bonus, get the most value out of those points, because it's gonna be one time in your life. Say that the banks, all the banks may follow suit and only give the sign-up bonus one time in your life. So make sure you're able to complete the minimum spending. All right, next is, um, so it's really important to not cancel your credit card right after getting your sign-up bonus. So it may seem intuitive, um, you know, to apply for a credit card, get your sign-up bonus, and then, you know, uh, maybe it's three months after you open the card, you get your sign-up bonus, the miles or points are in your account, and you're like, okay, 
you know, I don't need this card anymore. Let me cancel it because it has no use for me. And you know, you already got your points, so you can just move on to the next. That is a big mistake. Don't do that. The reason why is because you want to create a long-lasting, sustainable, friendly relationship with the banks so that they'll approve you for more cards in the future. If you apply for a card, get the sign-up bonus, cancel right away, they're going to flag you, they're going to think that you're just in it for the sign-up bonus. Even though you may be in it for the sign-up bonus, you have to follow the rules and be kind of the banks because they're the ones holding thousands of dollars in free travel and if you play nice with them they'll keep giving you the bonus over and over so if you get the sign of bonus it's important you don't cancel it right away and if you don't want to pay the annual fee that's fine as well just wait 10 11 months down the line and if the annual fee with this card doesn't give you enough benefits to keep it the following year then just you know you could do a three-step process I have a video on that three-step process to never pay the annual fee ever so you could just follow those steps you could I'm not really sure if I could link to it I'm doing a live right now um, but yeah check out my channel for that video if you want to get out of the annual fee don't just cancel your card right away there's options to downgrade there's options to uh, all right, Taylor has a question. What's your feeling on maxing out, hold on, maxing out the credit card for the points if you have the money to pay for it right away? So if you have the money to pay for your card right away, and let's just say the credit limit is $5,000 on your credit card, and you make a $5,000 purchase, but you have that $5,000 in your bank account ready to pay off that card, then yeah, I think that's fine. As long as it's in the short term, pay it off right away. You're gonna hurt your credit utilization, but that'll just be for the short term. If you have a big purchase and you wanna max out your credit card and make sure that you can pay it off in full right away, then yes, I think that's good. If you plan on waiting a few months, paying interest, then no, I don't think that's a good idea. Great question, Taylor. All right, so the next fundamental strategy is closing a card before you open a new one. So in the game of credit cards and travel points, the more cards you get, hey, give her credit, welcome. Um, thanks, thanks for uh, liking the points tuber video I did earlier, and thanks for stopping by the live stream. So if you, what was I saying? This is hard, it's like new to me to like talk to people and keep on track with the content. Uh, so if you, what's up Reckless Rican? Yeah, yeah, having a blast with my family down here in Bahamas, loving it. Um, here, let's, let's take a little, I'll give you guys a little tour. Not really a tour, but just kind of show you the beach. The resort is right on the beach. We're in the Bahamas right now. It's really beautiful. The weather has been a little windy. I hope you guys could hear me okay. If you can hear me okay, let me know. I tried to position myself so that the wind wouldn't be uh, too, uh, wouldn't affect the sound too much. <laughs> no, you're not super distracting. Um, you guys are good. I'm, I'm glad you guys joined me. All right. So, to get back on topic, yes, yeah, so you don't want to close a card before opening a new one. As I was saying, uh, the name of the game is to get multiple credit cards to get more travel points in the right way. You got to make sure you're following the rules to do so to make sure you have a great credit score because a great credit score will allow you to keep getting approved for more cards. Uh, I'm at 47 credit cards open at this moment and my credit score is an 816. Checked it um, right before going on this vacation. So, um, you know, if you follow the rules and the strategies that I teach on this channel, you'll be able to open up multiple credit cards and still keep your credit score high. And the reason you don't want to open up a credit card uh, or close a credit card before opening up a new one is because it could screw up with your credit utilization. Let's just say your credit utilization to keep numbers simple is at 10,000 between 
you know, let's say uh, two cards, and each card has 5,000 limit each. If you close, <clears throat> excuse me, if you close one of those cards at 5,000 credit limit, boom, your credit utilization drops. So whatever balance you had with the other card, it just dropped 50%, and that could screw with your credit score, and therefore, decreasing your chances of approval for your new card. The best strategy there is to open up a new card first and then take whatever steps you need to do to close your credit card or if you're gonna downgrade your credit card or ask for the annual fee to be waived. Either one of those steps, you wanna do it after you apply for a new credit card and ideally get approved. All right, you guys good? Still with me? <clears throat> so, uh... The next strategy for um, to have the next fundamental strategy for success with travel points is to know the rules and restrictions for each bank. So if you're in this for the long term and you, hey, Oso oh Wright says I want to start my own channel. I am hooked. Um, yeah, Oso oh Wright, you definitely should. Um, Give her credit says you're still here. Good. Thanks for being with me in the Bahamas. Sun is setting, so I don't know how much time I have left. Um, but yeah, also right, you should definitely start your own channel. It's a lot of fun. It could be a little difficult in the beginning, but if you consistently upload, um, you know, it's great. Um, I, I think my favorite part about this is the engagement that I get in my videos. I love it. Uh, so back to what I was saying, the rules and regulations or rules and restrictions for each bank application. So you wanna apply for Chase Cards first because of the 524 rule. And they have a 30 day rule, which means that you could only, uh, you could only uh, get approved for two cards, one business, one personal within a 30 day period. And um, you know, American Express, like I said before, you're only allowed one sign of bonus for your life. Citibank has the 6-6 six, six rule, which means if you've had six inquiries in the past six months, they probably won't approve you. And these are all unwritten rules for the most part. They're not official. These banks aren't uh, displaying them on their website. So it's important to know all these rules. I have a video on this going over six bank rules from Capital One to Chase to Citi to um, American Express, pretty much all the big banks and letting you know the strategy of how to apply for these cards, make sure you're getting approved and knowing the rules and restrictions to, um, to get approved. So uh, ID says, go enjoy your free time with your family. You deserve it. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, ID. Um, just had dinner with my family. It was great. I mean, we're together on this vacation. We're loving it. Uh, we ate at the uh, Italian restaurant here, which was really cool. We had uh, wine and pasta and food, and it's all included, which is great. There's no bill at the end of dinner, and the food is really good. So, of course, they have buffet here, but the uh, sit-down restaurants are my favorite because it's included as well. So you're, you're, everything here is included. Drinks, I'm not really drinking much. Uh, I don't drink much in general because I have kids. And, um, but, you know, having fun. We went on a catamaran today with my uh, eight-month-old daughter. She was right on me. It was like a four-person catamaran sailboat. And um, we're, we're having a blast as a family. This is uh, a much-needed vacation just because we moved to our new house a few days before going on this vacation in the past two months have been crazy. Uh, so, yeah, I appreciate all your support, guys. Keep the questions coming if you have any questions. Uh, on anything related to credit cards, travel points, or me, personal, whatever. Uh, yeah, just uh, keep the questions coming. Let's get to, all right, let's answer a question here. Uh, so Christine says, what is your credit score? You say 47 credit cards. Yes, so uh, officially opened 47 credit cards, and my credit score is an 816. Um, I know it sounds a little shocking if you're new to credit cards and travel points and just getting started or even if you are familiar, you know, you just got to be diligent in that area with credit, don't want to mess around. Taylor asks, what credit card do you use the most? Uh, so the credit card I use the most is probably the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. 
uh, especially now. I just did a video of what cards I'm using for the month of March. It kind of changes, but for the most part, I'm either using my Chase Sapphire Reserve card because the only things I'm really doing with my life is uh, eating and traveling. And so since I get three points per dollar spent with those activities, I'm gaining a lot of Chase Ultimate Reward Points. And Chase Points are my favorite uh, just because of the flexibility you know, to transfer to airlines, to hotels like Hyatt. So, um, and Reckless Recon says, nice palm trees. Yeah, I love these palm trees. And I don't know if you could see, but a lot of them are coconut trees. There's coconuts in them that you could just kind of jump up and get. <clears throat> If you guys could still see me okay, let me know because the sun is setting and I just want to make sure you guys could still see me, still hear me. It looks good on my phone. Hope it's good on your end as well. All right, let's get to the next topic. Keep the questions going. Um, thanks, Reckless Weekend. Says I'm looking good. I'm glad it's uh, goid. I'm looking goid twice. Thank you. <laughs> I know what you meant. So let's get to the next fundamental strategy, which is letting your points expire, which is a really sad thing to do. So I did this in the beginning as well. I didn't think anything of it. I think I had maybe one or 2,000 United Miles in my account, and the uh, I got notifications that my United Miles were going to expire. So I thought, you know what, I don't have... Giver Credit says it's a little pixelated, but you can still see and hear me. Okay, sorry about that. The internet is a little sketchy and um, the sun is going down really fast. So I'm gonna try to get through this, but thanks for sticking with me. Let's, uh, let's keep going through these questions that you guys have and I'm gonna go through this list as well. So letting your points expire, as I was saying, I let my one or 2,000 United Miles expire because I didn't have any travel plans. So I thought, oh, what's the big deal? I'll let one or 2,000 miles expire since I'm not gonna be using them for any trips coming up and it was only one or 2,000. That's a mistake that I made and I don't want you to make that mistake either. There are many different options to keep your miles and points from expiring. Uh, just one of the basics I want to hammer down is that if you have a credit card, let's say the uh, American, the uh, Citibank Platinum Select American Airlines MasterCard, which gives you the American Airlines miles, if you decide to cancel that card, then you'll still be able to keep your American Airlines miles. And let's say you get rid of that card, you have your American Airlines miles, 18 months down the road, your miles are about to expire, you, and you don't have any travel plans, don't let them expire. There are many ways to keep them from expiring. You could shop through an online travel portal or a dining program that the airline's loyalty program has. You could purchase magazines from mags to miles, uh, com, mags for miles com, and you could, for like 300, 400 miles, you could redeem, uh, you could get a magazine subscription for you or a friend or a family member and still keep your miles and reset the clock another 18 months, 24 months, depending on the loyalty program. So make sure you do not let your miles expire no matter how little, how much, and if you don't have any travel plans, there are always ways to reset the clock even if you don't have the card or you don't have any travel plans. All right, <clears throat> so we are 18 minutes in. Yeah, it's really beautiful. I'm gonna do a little 360 again. I'll show you guys the view. Yeah, I love this beach. The palm trees are really nice. So this, these are some rooms here. My room is right over there. So I got this green field in front and I could still kind of see the beach. So it's pretty nice. We got the soccer field basketball court behind me that's the little boathouse uh, where you could do kayaking and these are yeah those are like the little catamarans um, yeah so that's my little 360 of where I'm at <clears throat> beautiful beach white sand 
blue water, the water is actually really warm too. All right, so I think I saw another question. Yeah, I don't know how to... Okay, there we go. Christine asks, how can you get your points back? Is it possible to get them back? Yes, you can get your points back. So if your miles or points, that's a great question, Christine. Thank you for that. If your miles or points expire, and let's just say uh, it expired, it depends on the loyalty program, but let's just say it expired a month or two ago. You didn't have any travel plans or you just completely forgot about them. You could actually call up the loyalty program, ask them to have them reinstated. Sometimes they'll do it on goodwill. They'll do that one time uh, throughout your relationship with them. So you can get your miles and points back on goodwill completely for free. And some loyalty programs will actually charge you. It could be, you know, uh, $30 or $50 to get your miles and points reinstated. And I highly recommend doing that. It's definitely worth it. Don't let those miles and points be gone forever. Even if they did expire, you can get them back. All right, Reckless Rican asks, what camera uh, do I use to film? So the same camera that you see me on right now is the same camera that I use to film all my videos. It's a Google Pixel 2 phone. And the reason why I got this phone is because supposedly the camera is really good. I, it was before I even thought I was gonna do, do YouTube videos. I just didn't wanna carry a digital camera around because um, you know, I already have my phone anyway. So it's a Google Pixel 2. And Jillian says, David, I'm watching you right now. Get Bella and Kalea on your video. So um, my daughters, Bella, five years old, Kalea, eight months old, are with their mom right now, uh, my wife, Christine. They're around somewhere. Bella is always making friends. And, uh, you know, she's probably playing and running every day, all day. And, whoops, hit the camera. All day and all night, she's just playing with her friends. Uh, there's a bunch of kids here. So it's really nice. Um, having a great time here. So let's move on to the next one. I got two more fundamental strategies to help you succeed with credit cards and travel points. And the most important part of this is a sustainable strategy. Make sure you get it long term. So, um, all right. And actually, this is the last one. So, can't even read my handwriting. So um, then the last strategy is not opening a credit card because of the annual fee. So if you are wanting to get into credit cards and travel points or already are into credit cards and travel points, the annual fee may seem very intimidating, especially if it's $95 all the way up to $5. $150 with the American Express Platinum, those fees could seem really expensive. And you may think to yourself, why would I ever pay a fee to have a credit card? You know, when there's so many other credit cards with no annual fees or the annual fee is waived the first year. So that's a very valid point. Uh, I think it's important to kind of don't look at the annual fee as an annual fee to have the credit card. I would look at it as a form of investment to get benefits. So you're providing an upfront financial investment, which could be an annual fee, uh, assuming that the annual fee is upfront, even if it's way the first year, to get in return a lot of benefits that will help you get a ton of free travel. For example, a few days ago, I went to the um, IHG Intercontinental La Concha Hotel, and I was able to get two free nights so my wife got a free night I got a free night through the anniversary award uh, anniversary uh, award free night so basically we have the old IHD cards and with the card by paying $49 per year with that credit card we're able to redeem it for an annual uh, anniversary anniversary award free night at any IHG hotel. It doesn't matter what the points price is. It's different from the new IHG Premier card now, which is capped at 40,000 points. Regardless, we're getting a ton of value out of those anniversary free, uh, anniver I can't even say this, anniversary award free nights because at the, um, at the La Concha Hotel that we stayed at, it was valued, I believe it was at $342 per night. 
and we were paid $49 annual fee to get that $342 night value at that hotel. Key West is really expensive. Um, but let me see if I could put on a light. Yeah, it's getting really dark. <laughs> Giver Credit says that's a good way to look at annual fees. Yes, I believe uh, the best way to look at it is an investment and to make sure that you're getting value for that annual fee. Not just breaking even, but you should be getting more value out of that. Um, another example, so I give you an example of how I get the free anniversary award night with the IHG credit card. Uh, another example, I pay $450 a year, uh, this is my third year with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. Essentially after the $300 travel credit that I get, I'm paying $150 a year. And with that $150, I got um, TSA PreCheck or Global Entry as well as Priority Pass lounge access. So traveling with kids, going to lounges, even if you're not with kids, it's amazing. You get free food, you don't have to wait in the terminal on uncomfortable chairs, there's free Wi-Fi, there's um, comfortable seating, there's sleeping pods. So there's a ton of value that you get when you pay an annual fee with a card. All right guys, I think I might wrap this up because <laughs> As you can see, it's getting really dark. Um, you know what? If you wanna come for a walk with me, hold on, let me put my sandals on, I'm barefoot. If you wanna come for a walk with me and stay with me, I'm gonna go by the light and hopefully this works out okay. But if you still have some questions, uh, let me know. Just keep commenting below. There's like a little boathouse over here with some light hopefully you guys could see me if you if you guys are still with me let me know if you could see me okay because on my screen it's really dark all right heading over to the basketball court actually actually go to this building right here <clears throat> crank your iso LOL, low light alert. Yes, okay. Yeah, Reckless Recon, that is um, beyond my technical ability. I don't know how to do that while I'm on a live stream. But I am here. I gotta squat down, my tripod is, isn't big enough. All right, comment says, thanks for mini vacation from Nebraska. Awesome. Yeah, so, I hope you guys could see me better now. I'm by the building. And um, yeah, so back to my original question. I don't even know where my notes went. Okay, here it is. Uh, the last strategy. Um, yeah, so with the annual fee, I'll wrap that up and then I'll take the rest of your questions. Uh, if you have any, feel free to ask any questions. And if you guys could see me okay, uh, let me know and if the Wi-Fi is still good because I kind of left the area where the router, the Wi-Fi is. Let me turn a little bit. Cool. So uh, with the annual fee, as I was saying, some people are intimidated to go for credit cards because of the annual fee. There are, there's a three-step process to get out of the annual fee. And if you, um, if you know, let's say you have the, uh, I don't know, I can't think of a card off the top of my head. Usually the Chase Sapphire Prefer card is my go-to card, but now that the annual fee is up front of $95, it used to be waived the first year. So let's think, um, all right, regardless of the card, uh, if you, let's say the annual fee is waived the first year and you get a ton of value out of the card. What you could do is, um, there's a three-step process. I have a video on this as well. Uh, three ways to never pay the annual fee. You can get, um, you could call up 10, 11 months after you get approved for the card, you're using the card, you're a good customer, you're becoming a good friend with the banks, the banks are liking you, you're building a good relationship, they see that you're serious about using their credit cards, 
these are the most important aspects with getting credit cards. You're paying a bill in full um, every month. So 10, 11 months down the line, you could call up and say, hey, I've been a great customer with um, your credit card and the bank. I pay all my bills in full every single month and I, I, uh, I would like to have the annual fee waived. And you know, if you are a customer and you're paying everything in full, they wanna keep you. You know, as with any business, it costs a lot more for customer acquisition to get a new customer um, and it is, you know, you just pay, you waive the $95 and you get to keep your customer long term and hopefully this customer, which is you, the credit card holder, is going to pay the annual fee next year. And keep in mind, even if you don't pay the annual fees, these credit card companies, these banks are making trillions of dollars off of us. They, uh, regardless of the annual fees and any fees, late fees, anything like that, they're making 2 to 3% off every single transaction that we're making. On a, on a regular basis and think about how much us Americans are spending on food, shopping, whatever, every single day, they're making trillions off of us um, with that two to three percent transaction rate. So feel about not paying the annual fee. Hey, Tom Nash, thanks for joining me. Wow, Tom, so, so happy you're here. Uh, Tom was actually the very first person to review my channel about a week in and um, you know thanks so much for joining my live stream very cool Tom has some great YouTube tips uh, oh so right was talking about starting a YouTube channel definitely check out Tom Nash's channel he talks all about how to uh, create a YouTube channel um, great tips there let's get some of these questions going uh, Jillian says, I'm following you to the boathouse. I can see you better now. Good. Yeah, because it, it was way too dark over there. I thought it would be, I would have more time on the, uh, on the beach for sunset, but I got a, a light and, uh, I think the lighting was pretty good here. All right. Give her credit. Ask how long does it typically, typically take you to get enough points to take a trip? How far ahead do you plan? Great question. So with this trip, so my strategy is I'm constantly accumulating miles and points. Uh, with our life, I don't want to say unstable, but with two kids more unpredictable, we don't know uh, exactly when we're going to take a vacation. Sometimes some so like a week or two may come up for us because of our lifestyle, then we'll most likely do something spontaneous with the miles and points to make sure that we're getting a lot of value. So we don't have specific destinations in mind, but we do have like kind of a list of destinations and we're open to go wherever as long as we're getting free travel, uh, really good redemptions on flights, as well as free hotel nights. So to answer your question, um, I would say the last time we planned for a trip. So this trip we didn't really plan for. It was kind of last minute. We, we booked things about a month or two before this. And the first part of our trip going to Orlando for Disney, the three nights that we booked uh, through Hyatt, was um, we booked that the night before. Just because life was really crazy. We moved into a new house and we didn't know when we were going. Uh, so we booked those uh, Hyatt uh, hotel nights the night before. Those were 8,000 points per night, 24,000 for the three nights. I just filmed a video today actually in, here in the Bahamas about how I saved three over $3,000 on this vacation. Those three nights would have cost us $864 if we would have paid full price in cash. So, um, but if you are, to back to your question, that's, that's my strategy by the way. I don't really have... Um, set trips in mind anytime soon just because my daughter is eight months old and whenever we get time we then we book our trip so I'm always constantly accumulating miles and points through credit card sign-up bonuses every 91 days trying to um, you know if there's a good elevated sign-up bonus I'll get that and if there isn't then I'm just going through the cards that I'm eligible to be approved for so I'm just uh, my wife and I are constantly accumulating miles and points and making our miles and points work for us rather than having a fixed destination and fixed date because uh, that's usually when um, 
it's it, you lose out on value with the miles of points. I would say, um, you know, depending on how many people you're traveling with, give it a good six months to book your trip, if you assuming you have the miles and points in your account already, because. Um, you know, award availability could book up really soon, especially if you want to go to Europe between the months of June and September. It's really pricey then, so you want to book those many months out. Hope that answers your question. Christine asks, what are some of the benefits with paying annual fees? Uh, so some of the benefits with paying annual fees with the United Explorer card, you're getting free check bags, you're getting um, two uh, tickets, two passes to the United Lounge every year so you can get free drinks, free food, a nice quiet place to chill out until your flight is taken off, especially if you have like a four, five, eight hour layover in an airport, being in a lounge makes the experience a lot better. Um, another benefit is free anniversary award nights, which I spoke about earlier, which is where you, um, which is definitely, I think the best time to pay an annual fee when you get free anniversary award nights through Marriott, through Hilton, or through Hyatt, through IHG, Hilton, I don't, I, I don't know off the top of my head if Hilton has that or not. Um, but yeah, the free anniversary award nights are definitely another benefit. Great question, Christine. Uh, Jillian says, I could see you clearly. Great. Uh, Tom says you did a great job with this channel by providing lots of value. Thanks, Tom. That means a lot coming from you. Um, Jillian says uh, put your video, put your three ladies on the next video. Sure, I'll bring in uh, my wife and two kids. That'd be fun. Uh, Christine says thanks for answering the question. Love your live videos. You're welcome. Ty Bin says, uh, in general, how many points do you accumulate in one year organically? So personally, we don't really spend a lot of money on credit cards. We basically, like our, our just our living expenses is we go to Costco and do our food shopping there. We uh, pay for gas. Um, we don't have a mortgage. We own our car. Um, yeah, our, our everyday expenses is really low. So organically, it's probably maybe, I don't know, 15,000, 20,000, really low. So what I do is creative spending techniques. Uh, some people call it manufactured spending. I like the term creative spending. So um, through plastic, if I have referrals, I'll do some other uh, spending like that to make sure that we're able to hit the minimum spending. And now that I have two kids, I don't do as much creative spending. I used to be able to do like around 20,000 per month in um, manufactured spending. So if you're not sure what that is, that's basically charging the card without spending your own money. Uh, I was doing gift cards, stuff like that. Now it's just very time consuming. I don't have as much time as I used to. Um, Garrett Credit says, gotta love having cars to be able to do last minute plans like that. Yeah, uh, I like to keep at least 500,000 miles and points in my account to do trips. Now that I have two daughters, which could be expensive now, my fourth daughter, or my second daughter, fourth passenger, is still a lap child. So she's not too expensive yet. So I got to, um, you know, plan ahead and just constantly accumulate miles and points to get trips like this to the Bahamas. Uh, so ID says, what did you study in college and how do you get to where you are? Keep up the great work. So in college, I studied advertising and marketing. I graduated back in 2008 and advertising and marketing was a lot different in 2008. I think Facebook came out 2000 five maybe and it was still in its infant stages now facebook is like the marketing plan for most businesses we didn't learn anything about social media back in uh college but i think my mindset was still there uh with marketing and advertising i was always creating new businesses new money making ideas and um you know that was kind of uh something i was always into i never wanted to get a job 
So to give you a little bit more background of me and where I came from, I decided I did not want to have a job coming out of college. So I started like a new branch of a family member's business, which was to sell t-shirts, hats, and pens, pretty much any promotional products to uh, college kids. So my senior year, I was kind of developing that business, had a lot of fraternities and sororities buying t-shirts and hats and shot glasses from me with their uh, whatever custom logo that they wanted or imprinting or text. And I thought, you know, I could build this more uh, to another business. So my ex-girlfriend at the time was living in Tallahassee. I went to school at University of Tampa, by the way, down in Florida. And my ex-girlfriend at the time was going to Florida State University and in, up in Tallahassee, which is the capital of Florida. And there was about 100,000 students within a 10-mile radius of this city. So I thought that was a great opportunity for me to build up this business of t-shirts, hats, pens. And basically I was going door to door to sororities and fraternities during their lunch break, which is when they're all in the room. I would just make big announcements and say, hey, if you guys wanna buy t-shirts, hats, pens, you know, I just graduated college last year and you know, I wanna help you guys out, do whatever I can to you know, help you get whatever products you want, t-shirts, hats, shot glasses, ping pong balls um, and so that's kind of how I started that business and then uh, but probably my biggest business was uh, my most successful business was my food business I had a private chef slash catering business and uh, slash health coaching business it was a vegan uh, vegan food business in New York which was perfect because my market was to um, wealthy families who could afford to eat organic vegan food and I would cook it every day and deliver. Anyways, I feel like I rambled on there a while. I uh, hope that answered your question. Just wanted to give you a little background where I came from. So did I graduate debt free? Yes, I was very fortunate to um, have uh, to, to not graduate with debt or student loans. I feel like that kind of shaped um, you know my direction in life after, after graduating. Christine asks, what is your experience with free lounges? Will it include my partner or kids? Yes, great question. Uh, you know, there's a few cards that offer <clears throat> priority pass lounge access, which is kind of the, the most expansive lounge network that there is. It, I think there's over a thousand different priority pass lounges around the world. And if it isn't a lounge, then it's a restaurant that will credit you $28 per person. So let's just say you have the Chase Sapphire Reserve card with the priority pass. You could go to a restaurant that's in the network. And if you're traveling with one other person, a guest, you get $20 for you, $28 for your guests. So that's $56 in free food that you get at the, um, at the airport. And if you're doing a round trip, you know, that could be uh, $112 in free food. And if you're paying the annual fee, which I like to say is $150 for the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you're getting really good benefits right there. So that would be an example of um, free lounges. And Chase Sapphire Reserve used to let you bring in, I think up to like 40 people. It said unlimited, but I think it was like a ton of people. Nowadays, they limited that. Uh, so, moving on, Jillian says, uh, yep, yeah, I studied business, careful, you, uh, Reckless Recon says, careful, YouTube, been done, been dumb about kids on YouTube, not really sure what you mean, um, I have Business Hilton, and maybe Hilton Aspire, what do you think? Yeah, uh, the Hilton cards are great, you know, as long as you're gonna use the benefits. I would try to look at the Hilton cards as keeper cards because you're only gonna be able to get that sign-up bonus once in your lifetime. So, because it's American Express card, you're only allowed to sign a bonus one time in your entire life. So you wanna make sure you get it at a point in your life where you're gonna keep it. Um, all American Express cards, if you're getting them, I'd recommend getting them as keeper cards uh, with the exception of the Delta Gold card because you could always just downgrade the Delta Gold card which currently has a sign-up bonus of 60,000 Delta Sky Miles. 
and the annual fee is waived, and then you could downgrade that to the blue, uh, the American Express Blue Delta Sky Miles card, which has no annual fee. You get to keep your Delta Sky Miles, assuming you're not going to use the other benefits. So yeah, I would uh, regarding your Hilton question. I think the Hilton Aspire is great, assuming you're going to use all the benefits. Uh, Christine asks, can you pay off? student loans or mortgage with credit cards. Yes, you can uh, through the, the uh, service called Plastic. There's a Q on the end. You can pay any single bill that you want with a credit card. And there is one stipulation. It costs 2.5% per transaction. But a great way to get around this is if you have some friends or family, and if you're watching this, you're probably the person who is kind of like the go-to with credit cards and travel points and you know so you could kind of be that person that leader among your community of friends and family where you're giving advice and if you get them to sign up for a plastic account and uh, like as a referral then you could get a thousand fee free dollars for each person that you sign up and uh, so that could be a great way to pay off mortgage and student loans but excuse me to pay off to to use plastic on a regular basis and pay 2.5 percent for all of your transactions i don't think is worth it because at 2.5 percent depending on your return uh it may not be that good for a sign up bonus yes i think it's worth it but for everyday spending on a card it may not be worth it unless you're going for status or trying to hit certain uh spending tiers with cards uh, with that but like I was saying I think getting referrals with plastic is a great way with friends and family to at least get you know a few thousand fee free dollars um, you know to help you out and not have to pay that 2.5 percent which could come out to $25 per thousand dollars that you're paying for it could, it could add up it could be kind of expensive all right give her credit says being an entre entrepreneur myself love hearing stories like that yes I love um, hearing entrepreneurial stories i get really uh pumped up hearing people's success stories and uh that's kind of uh like the the foundation of what helped me build businesses is hearing other people's success stories and i would love to say that yeah i started this business it was successful and that business it was successful i'm not really sharing all of the lessons learned i don't want to call them failures but the lessons learned when creating all these businesses and it's probably been close to maybe like 30 plus money making hobbies or businesses uh, to get to maybe a handful of successful profitable businesses so and and as with any entrepreneurial story peopling more than they're succeeding for the most part there are small percentages of people who just knock it out of the park first try and the cliche example would be Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook and I think that's what that's the standard that a lot of people hold is um, Mark Zuckerberg being the um, kind of the Michael Jordan of the entrepreneur world that you know he I think he had a lot of things going for him that made him successful um, and make billions of dollars not everyone's gonna get to that point right away so ID says, thanks for your response. Your content is super helpful for me as a new grad. Oh, you're at University of Miami. Awesome. Here, that's a nice school. I had some friends who went there. Um, Reckless Weekend says, so because I have Hilton Biz, I won't get bonus on expire. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure you, you will get the bonus on, you could have, I'm pretty sure uh, that you can get the bonus on different American Express products. So regardless of the family that it's in with Hilton, if you have it with uh, American Express, they look at it as individual products. So each card is its own product. You're not allowed to get that same product sign a bonus again. So if you have the Hilton business card, you can't get the Hilton business card sign a bonus again, but you can get the other Hilton product uh, sign a bonuses. I'm pretty sure on that, unless uh, there's some rules that I'm overlooking. Um, Giver Credit says, Rican, I believe it has to be the same exact card. Yes, both these cards are considered separate products. 
great answer. Give her credit. That's kind of what I just said, and you beat me to the punch. Thanks for answering that. Yeah, so it's different products uh, for American Express that you, you could get approved, assuming you follow the application rules for every single uh, American Express card, but you just can't get the same card twice. Um, so that, that is an important rule, and that's one of my fears uh, that I have. I don't tell a lot of people this, but I'm worried that one day all the banks are going to say you can only get this sign-up bonus once in your lifetime. And the trend that I think is going to happen, I don't think that's going to happen, by the way, that the banks are going to follow suit with American Express and say you're only allowed to get this product sign-up bonus once in your entire life because the banks and the credit card companies want your money. If it's not from a credit card, then it's going to be from your 401k or your mortgage or your car payment. Either way, they have their hands in pretty much every financial aspect of your life. The credit cards are just one aspect. Uh, the way I look at it is these banks, these credit card companies are big casinos. And when you go to a casino, you may gamble and you know they're hoping that you lose like the house always wins with the credit cards and by following the strategies that i talk about on my channel and that i'm saying with you right now you will beat the house right as long as you don't get in debt but if you don't gamble or you know you're not losing at the gambling you're buying food at the casino so you're paying your mortgage with bank with chase or wells fargo or whatever or they're they're managing your re retirement fund or you know, you have your car payment with them or whatever. Either way, the banks want your money. So I don't think credit card sign-up bonuses are going away anytime soon. I think they're just going to make it a lot harder for people like you and me to get the sign-up bonuses multiple times and to, um, to you know, keep, keep getting the sign-up bonus. For example, the Sapphire rule where you're only allowed to get the Sapphire, whether Chase Sapphire Reserve, Chase Sapphire Preferred, you're only out to get that every 48 months. So uh, I think they're going to make rules more strict like that. And my prediction with the sign up bonuses is that they're going to make it more of a long term sign up bonus. So, you know, rather than the $2,000 or $3,000 in three months to get that 50,000 point sign up bonus, I think what they're going to do is they're going to say you have to spend ten thousand dollars over the next 12 months to get that sign up bonus so you could spend that ten thousand dollars within a month if you have the means to do that and you'll get that sign up bonus but i think that's where the trend is going they want you to keep that card and spend as much as you can with it long term to get that sign up bonus all right you guys have any other uh questions let me check my battery all right, still good, 52%. Yeah, yesterday, um, while my first, second live stream that I was doing in Key West, my battery was at, I think, 12% when I started, and it just completely died on me. Uh, this time, we are good. We're at 51% now, and uh, so I'm still good to, uh, to do this live stream. I wanted to do a longer live stream, because the first two live streams that I did, the first one was in Orlando, second one was in uh, Key West. They were kind of short, you know, I just kind of delivered the content, got to the point and got out because I was a little nervous and wasn't really sure how to work the whole live stream thing. But now I am in it for the long run, as long as you guys are with me. Yeah, and so after uh, this part of the trip, so we have like three more days here in the Bahamas. And just to recap, I was able to get five nights here for 15,000 points per night here in the Bahamas. And uh, window, window points, sorry. And the way I was able to get these window points was two different ways. The first way was through a credit card sign-up bonus that my wife got, the Barclays Wyndham card, the no annual fee version. So she was able to, um, she was able to get the sign-up bonus of 30,000 points, no annual fee. 
And then uh, we were going to the mall and getting my five-year-old daughter's ears pierced, and there was a booth, and they started talking to us about travel, and I kind of knew where the conversation was going. And they said that we could do a timeshare presentation. So if you're not familiar with timeshare presentations, they're gold mines. I definitely recommend doing it. And don't fall for what they're saying um, at the timeshare presentation. You know, um, to me, timeshares don't really work with my lifestyle. So I'm just, I gotta uh, stretch. All right, timeshares don't really work with my lifestyle. I don't agree with the premise of paying for 30 vacations up front without even trying it one time. Timeshare presentations are super aggressive. They want you to buy on the spot. They'll offer tons of incentives to make sure that you buy, you know, spend $10,000 up front and then pay $500 to $1,000 per month for the next 30 years so that you could have access to a room that you still have to pay like a thousand dollars for um so it doesn't make sense to do timeshare presentations to me anyways that's my rant on timeshare presentations we did the wyndham timeshare presentation in myrtle beach south carolina which is where we live and went to the timeshare presentation spent a couple of hours we um I actually did a timeshare presentation video that should publish soon. I just have to finish editing that of how to survive a timeshare presentation. And so after that timeshare presentation, we got 45,000 Wyndham points, which was gold because the hotel that we're staying at now is valued at $330 per night. And the great thing about Wyndham loyalty program is that there's only a 15,000 point per night cap flat rate on every single Wyndham hotel that you're you know, now that you're watching this because supposedly in the beginning of April they're going to screw up that whole system and they're making it into tears but at the moment that I'm sharing this information with you on this live stream there's only a 15,000 points per night price point for every single Wyndham hotel they're hoping that you're going to go for the $70 a night hotel and use those 50,000 points. But for me, I wanted to get the most value out of these 15,000 points per night. So this place that we're staying at in the Bahamas is $330 per night. So with that timeshare presentation, I was able, we were able to turn 45,000 Wyndham points into $990. Uh, so I would say that was a pretty good redemption of our Wyndham points. And we have about uh, three more days left here, and then we're going to head back to Fort Lauderdale, stay with some family for a little bit, and then head back home to uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So I've got some more questions here. Um, give a credit, it says, saw both live streams. Awesome. Thanks so much for the support. Christine asks, what is the best first card to get? That is the hardest question to answer uh, because everybody has their own specific travel goals and financial goals. Some people don't want to travel at all, so getting a travel rewards credit card doesn't apply to them. They just want cash back. Some people have a trip to Europe that they want to get, uh, so that might kind of change the order. Um, but the overall general rule... Um, so I'm in the process of creating a flow chart of which cards people should get and kind of make it like branch out, you know, if you want the companion pass. Do you, you know, can you get business cards? I'm in the process of making a flow chart to do that. Uh, to answer that question. But the overall general rule would be to go for Chase credit cards first. The reason why is because of the 524 rule. And the 524 rule, just to uh, recap, is if you've, open five cards or more in the past 24 months, you won't be approved for any Chase credit card. It used to just be a handful of Chase credit cards, but now it's every single Chase credit card. Ah, breaks my heart. I get a little sad about that. So I would recommend going for a Chase credit card, either the Chase FI Preferred. That is a great card to get because of the flexibility with the points. Or if you just, you're not really sure 
what your travel plans are yet or you're not going to travel for a few years or you just want to get comfortable with travel rewards credit cards then i would recommend the chase free card the chase freedom card is good but you do have to do a little more legwork into it you have to activate your five percent categories every quarter so if you wanted to um, maximize the value uh, with your spending chase freedom would be good but i think uh, the best one for people to start out with if they have zero travel credit cards take it slow and get the chase freedom unlimited card if you do have travel plans coming up then the chase sapphire prefer card is the best first card all right <clears throat> tybin says gotta love the the pixel 2 i know it's amazing this Google Pixel 2 phone that I'm talking to you on this live stream and that I use for all my other videos that I film on my channel, every single video, actually, uh, it's amazing. I uh, It's pretty much a computer. It's, it's never given me any problems. Um, you know, the quality, I think, with the camera is pretty good. Hope, hope you guys think the quality is good. Not really sure. Um, what it looks like on your end. I think it looks good on my end, um, just in general, like the quality of the videos. Yeah. Um, and then Tybin says, what's Wyndham's age limit for kids where you won't be charged additional points? Yeah, so that's a good question. So actually, yeah, that is one thing we ha did have to pay for. My daughter is five years old. We had to pay $27 per day for her, so I uh, think came out to $135 we had to pay for her to stay the five days. But my eight month old daughter, of course, we didn't have to pay for. Um, she's way too young, she's barely eating any food, maybe like a couple of smidgens of steamed carrots that we're giving her here. Uh, so yeah, $27 is the price for kids. I don't know the age uh, minimum to pay that price, um, but she is five years old, so maybe uh, I forgot. I remember looking at the number. <clears throat> Great question, though. So, I, yeah, and with that, it's not completely free because we do have to pay the $27 per night, but we're still coming out uh, really, really well. Um, Give her credit says, yeah, I can't wait until May when a four slot opens for you. Yes. Um, in a few days it'll be April and then May will come around sooner than you think um, do you have any uh, cards you have your site set on once you get that 524 uh, slot open yeah the 524 I feel like out of any so I do like a bunch of free card consultations I feel like I say the word 524 maybe like uh, like 50, 60 times a day. It's insane. I'm always explaining that rule. Um, are there fees or taxes for hotel nights? And then Tybin says, thanks. I see it's cash instead of points. Yes. So for the Wyndham stays for kids, uh, they don't charge an additional fee in points. It is cash, uh, which is, yeah, which makes sense because it's 15,000 points per night. I, I don't think... Um, they would charge a little more for that uh, with points. So uh, back to Christine's question, are there fees or taxes for hotel nights? Oof. Sorry, my legs. So I gotta like spread my legs out in order to be on film. If I don't, this is, <laughs> this is what I look like because the uh, tripod, I'm gonna hold it for a little bit so I could stand up straight. Wish I could sit. Hmm. Anyways, <laughs> I'll, I'll squat down for a few more minutes, answer your questions. What was the question? Are there fees or taxes for hotel nights? For the most part, no. Compared to redeeming uh, flights with miles and points, I'm gonna do a little squat. Compared to uh, redeeming flights with miles and points, usually, or actually always, there are taxes. Either it's $5.60 if you're flying domestic, and it could be up to $500 if you're gonna fly across the Atlantic to Europe with British Airways, which I don't recommend you pay for. Don't um, pay the high fuel surcharges of like three, four, five hundred dollars $500. Totally not worth it. But with hotels, whenever you book a war nights, 
it's super simple. So for uh, beginners starting out, hotel points are pretty much straightforward. There's no alliances, there's no partners, there's uh, nothing confusing like that with hotel points. It's pretty much straightforward. You have the points in your hotel account, you go on the hotel website, you search for availability for the hotels that you want, and you book it. Um, one tip that I would like to give there, I think you get the most value out of your hotel points by going for the lowest category hotel and stretch out your hotel points. So for example, with IHG, you could book uh, hotels as low as 10,000 points per night. And if you get the points break list, sometimes it could be as low as 5,000 points per night. So I recommend going for those hotels and stretching out your points and get more nights uh, at, at whatever destination you're going for compared to the under, uh, other end of the spectrum where you're going for luxury nights, which are still fun and great as well. Depends on your travel goals. Um, you know, staying at a really expensive hotel that will cost $900 a night and you're going to spend 70,000 points. For example, uh, going along with IHG, if you stay at the Intercontinental um, I forgot the name of the hotel, the one in the Maldives, it's 70,000 points per night, IHG points, but that same hotel could be up to eight, $900 per night. So you kind of blow out, you'll uh, spend all of your points in your hotel account on that one stay, but it's kind of like uh, an amazing stay that you would most likely never want to pay $900 a night for, unless it was a special occasion. So. Um, and to go back to your question, there usually aren't any taxes or fees when staying at hotel nights. Mainly, it's uh, it, very rare. Like when you stay at resorts like this, at all inclusives, then there'll sometimes be like little taxes and fees for extra people. Like in my case, my five year old daughter, we had to pay $27 a night for. So, um, Usually all inclusives, sometimes they'll charge a fee or the really high end fancy hotels will charge a resort fee. Um, but for the most part, I would say 95% of all the hotel redemptions using hotel points, you don't have to pay the, um, you don't have to pay taxes and fees compared to flight redemptions. All right, how do I get to the questions here? Uh, Kristen. Hey, Kristen. Thanks for joining. Appreciate you stopping by. How do I maximize my points? Oh, it went away. How do I maximize my points for the Chase Travel Portal? I currently have the Chase Freedom and will be getting Chase Reserve next. <clears throat> Great question. And I actually used um, the Chase Travel Portal for this vacation that I'm on right now. So I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But basically the Chase Travel Portal with my experience, I used to do a lot of award bookings. I don't really do them as much anymore just because they are very time consuming and I'd rather spend my time actually making videos like this for you guys to teach you and have a greater reach uh, than help you know a smaller amount of people and charge you know uh, money that way. I'd rather just you know, share this knowledge with the masses. That's how I would like to spend my time. Um, and the lessons I've learned from doing all these award bookings is that the Chase Travel Portal is beneficial maybe 20% of the time. So if you're booking a uh, trip, you know, flights or whatever, most likely your, your Chase points are better off being transferred to airline uh, partners or hotel partners such as Hyatt, or airline partners such as Southwest. If you wanna go domestic, Caribbean, and now Hawaii, you're gonna get the best value there for domestic um, when uh, using your chase points for travel airline partners, or um, JetBlue as well. And there are a ton of other sweet spots which I've been really wanting to make a video of how to maximize chase points with travel partners. Now with the travel portal, you have your chase what was it again you have your chase and i don't know how to get to these comments they just hide on me all right chase okay there it is 
you have your Chase Freedom card. Okay, you have another question. So currently, right now, since I have the Chase Freedom, I could transfer those points, those points now to the different travel partners. No, sorry. So I was just going to get to that part. So with your Chase Freedom uh, points that you have right now, you can't transfer to travel airline partners and hotel partners. You're only stuck at a one cent per point ratio when booking through the Chase Travel Portal with the Chase Freedom card, Chase Freedom Unlimited card, or the Chase Inc. Cash card or Chase Inc. Unlimited card. If you only have those cards and you don't have the three annual fee Chase cards, such as the Chase Sapphire Reserve, Chase Sapphire Preferred, and Chase Inc. Preferred, you won't be able to transfer to airline partners and hotel partners. So if you do have your points in your Chase Freedom account and uh, you're getting the Chase Sapphire Reserve soon, then I recommend waiting until you get the Chase Sapphire Reserve before you make any moves because at a one cent per point ratio, you're not really getting much value when booking travel through the travel portal. There are certain instances like the 20% that I was mentioning, you do get good value, uh, but it's very rare that you do. Like if you ever see any deals like flights to Hawaii for $300 or during the fall and winter flights to Paris for $250, stuff like that, then those are good times to book the uh, book through the travel portal because then you're going to get really good rede uh, flight prices through the travel portal and then it makes sense to use your chase points that way. But those are very rare instances. So to go back to your question, I would wait until you get the Chase FI reserve card and you'll be able to transfer to your airline partners and hotel partners depending on how you want to travel. And in certain instances, you can get more value out of the travel portal by actually booking through the Chase travel portal instead of transferring. So for example, on this trip that I'm on right now, we were in Fort Lauderdale and we took a flight from Fort Lauderdale for the four of us to go to the Bahamas. It's like a 30 minute flight and it cost, it would have cost, I think, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think $384 it would have cost the four of us to get to the Bahamas, but I you I booked it through the Chase Travel Portal since I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve as well, and you get one point equals 1.5 cents. So I applied 10,000 Chase points to get $150 off. So I believe I paid $191 and 10,000 Chase points instead of $384. So that would be a way to kind of offset some of the costs. I don't recommend doing that if you don't have a lot of chase points because those chase points can be better used in other ways. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. I was kind of rambling a little bit. I've been talking for an hour and 12 minutes. Wow. I don't even know how to see who is on here. I just see the comments as they come. So Kristen, I hope I answered your question. If I did, let me know. Uh, what's the ratio to transfer points with the Chase FI Reserve. So yes, regardless of the card, great question, regardless of the Chase card that you have, to transfer your Chase points over to transfer partners such as British Airways, United Airlines, Hyatt, whatever the transfer partners are, it's always a one-to-one -one ratio transferring. The way that the Chase FI Reserve gives you more value for your points is only when you book through the Chase Travel Portal itself. And in that case, it's one cent per one, or one point equals 1.5 cents. So 10,000 points equals $150. Uh, see how that could be a little confusing because, um, you know, it's like there's different ratios there, cents per point, and then transfer ratios, but it's only one, uh, one chase point per transfer partner. Good, I'm glad you see that. I'm glad I was able to clear that up for you. Oh man. All right, let's see, uh, let's see if we could move on. If you guys are still with me, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's see how long we could do this for. I'll go as long as you guys are here. I see, what's my battery? My battery's at 40%. Awesome. 
Hey, what's up, Dustin from Waller's Wallet? Hope you're, ha hope you're enjoying your trip. Yes, I am very much. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, guys, if you're watching this, definitely check out Dustin's channel, Waller's Wallet. Um, you guys are asking me some things about uh, award bookings. He is the guy, um, you know, you could request some award bookings through him and he'll do it live for you. So to give you guys an update, I'm gonna walk over just bear with me a minute. I'm gonna walk over to another location. Just cause my legs are really starting to hurt a little bit. So, yeah, so I'm like right on the edge of the uh, resort here. I think I still have solid Wi-Fi. Yeah, I've really lucked out here. All right, so bear with me a minute. I'm just gonna Adjust the tripod. Keep your questions coming. Let's see. Yeah, it's really beautiful here at night and the water is really warm. We, uh, there's the water you could probably hear. Oh, that's the catamaran we went on. We went with uh, my wife and eight month old daughter. The water was really rough and, but the water was really warm also. So what I'm gonna do here, I see a little ledge. Now, I see a ledge right here and I'm going to put the tripod, hold on, be another 30 seconds. I'm gonna put the tripod onto the ledge. This way I could stand up better because I was actually squatting for that whole hour and 16 minutes talking to you guys because I'm a little taller than my tripod. But I guess that's one of the cool things with the live. Awesome. Let me just turn this down a little bit. <clears throat> if you guys could see me okay still, it looks like the lighting is still good. And if you guys could hear the waves crashing, it's really relaxing right now. I don't know if you guys could hear that. Beach is right here. Okay. All right. So let me get back to the questions here. <clears throat> uh, Kristen asks, have you ever cashed out your points instead of redeeming them? Uh, no, I don't think that is a good idea to do. I've never done that. I know some people have. Your points are much better off being used for transferring to travel partners or um, sometimes getting good redemption through the Chase Travel Portal if you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred or Chase Sapphire Reserve. Sometimes it makes sense. I don't recommend doing it. Um, getting cards or just getting the straight cash because that 50,000 points that you're uh, getting, let's say you get 50, 60,000 Chase points or 50,000 points in your case with the Chase Sapphire Reserve, those, those points could be transfer to airline partners that's like two round trips to or that's like a round trip to Europe right there um, or if you have the uh, Hyatt card you know that could be um, like seven nights almost in in a hotel so uh, compared to five hundred dollars you know I don't I don't recommend cashing it out um, those points are worth a lot more with other things Christine says, great video today, points tuber, great community of points channels. Thank you, Christine. Uh, yeah, I did post a video today kind of highlighting all of the points tubers, uh, you know, just all the videos of the month. I think uh, I just kind of want to bring the community together more and, you know, we're all doing the same stuff and we each have our own style of explaining things. Some of us explain it better than others and um, that's why I just wanted to share those videos uh, of other great points tubers uh, such as Dustin from Waller's Wallet who's in who's with us right now um, yeah as well as eight other people I, I share so you can check out that video so many other great people in this space um, Waller's Wallet says collab at some point also favorite card in your wallet yes Dustin I would love to do a collaboration uh, I think that'd be really cool. That'd be fun. I'm definitely down for that. As soon as I get back 
home, which will be uh, the beginning of April. So yeah, next week, let's definitely do something. <clears throat> and favorite card in my wallet? I would say the Chase Inc. preferred card. Uh, because of the earning potential, the 80,000 point sign-up bonus that I got from that, but most importantly, the cell phone insurance. I love that aspect of it. And because it took me two years to get that card. Every time I go to a new state, or uh, go out of state like I am, like when I went to Florida, because I, I don't have any Chase Banks in South Carolina, and I'm over 524, and if you're over 524, you could actually still get approved for Chase cards, you just can't do it online. You have to go in the branch and be pre-approved. So I was able to get pre-approved for the Chasing Preferred card when I visited family in New York and got the Chasing Preferred card last summer. So um, I think because I, I work so hard for that card, that's my favorite card. Um, not not for like the right reasons of earning potential, but just uh, I feel like I work really hard to get it. <clears throat> um, Tybin says, Dustin, thanks for the Amex Ebates video and got me started on membership reward points. Yeah, Dustin does great videos. Um, Ebates is a great service, a great website as well. Uh, would love to see collaborations with points tubers. That's what Christine says. Yes, me too. I would love to see. Uh, I do have like a grand vision of one day kind of like creating an event. I think that would be really cool if all of us points tubers all get in the same building. And even if it's not a physical event for people uh, for people to see, if we could somehow do it digitally, come all together, I think that'd be really cool to create a panel, something like that. <clears throat> Give her credit says I can hear it. Wise Flies and Waller's Wallet interview discussion of topics. Yeah, um, great stuff, Dick great content and give a credit says uh, congrats on the ink preferred want that card too yes and I'm not gonna stop at the ink preferred right before um, coming to actually right before going to Key West so we went from Myrtle Beach South Carolina to Orlando for Disney then to Fort Lauderdale before going to Key West. And when I was in Fort Lauderdale, pretty much as I always do, because I have family in Fort Lauderdale, so I visit them often, I go to the Chase Bank, because it's right next to them, it's the block away, and I go in and see if I'm pre-approved for any cards. The next cards I really want to get, even though I'm over 524, would be the Chase Inc. Cash and the Chase Inc. Unlimited. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Yeah, so the Chase Inc. Cash and Chase Inc. Unlimited, those are the uh, two cards that I really want to get next. And I'm going to keep going to um, the bank and keep trying to see if I'm pre approved for those cards. Dustin says, big trip on your bucket list. Yeah, so big, this trip that we're on right now, we have two weeks. What we wanted this trip to be is because um, my wife actually uh, left her old job and is starting her new job and we had this two to three week span and we knew it was coming that she was gonna leave her old job. So we were planning on actually going to the Maldives. And what threw off our plan was we, uh, we moved into a new house. So because we moved into a new house that completely screwed everything up because we didn't want to book this big trip and then, you know, as it, with anyone who moves, I'm sure you know, you know, um, it just screws everything up. You don't know what's gonna happen, it's totally unpredictable. I didn't wanna book these, uh, we have enough uh, miles in the bank. We were gonna use American airline miles to go to the Maldives through Qatar suites. So we wanted to get the suites, uh, the Q suites on Qatar Airways. And um, I think it was 70,000 American airline miles. We we're gonna go through Atlanta. We had it all picked out. And then we decided to move to another house and then we're like, you know, we didn't know what we were gonna do up until like a month or so before this trip. So uh, to answer your question, bucket list, Maldives with the kids in business class only just because we have our eight month old and that 
you know, 14 to 15 hour flight is going to be rough to get there. And then when we go to the Maldives, we wanted to go to Sri Lanka, which is I think like an hour and a half away, and then to southern India because we love surfing and we wanted to surf in Sri Lanka and southern India. So that's our big bucket list trip. We have the miles. We're not touching them. We're being you know, being really patient and we're not going to touch those miles. We're waiting for that trip to uh, go to the Maldives, Sri Lanka, and southern India. Probably make that like a two or three week trip if we ever get that time. So we're going to try really hard to keep those miles uh, untouched. Give her credit says get the uh, in cash first. Yes, definitely in cash. Five uh, points per dollar spent. Um, in uh, office stores, other places like that. Great value there. <clears throat> Christine says, I like your determination to get cards uh, for Chase, even though you're over 524. Yes, not stopping anytime soon. I am determined to get all three Chase Inc. cards. Um, and while as well says, uh, Dustin says, sounds awesome. Yes. Dustin, do you have any... Uh, bucket list trips um, that you want to go to and you know I know you uh, you have some some stuff going on in your life any fun trips um, and then Christine asks can you get chase cards if you're over 524 I heard sometimes you can get business cards <clears throat> great question Christine so you could actually get all of the Chase Ultimate Reward Point earning cards if you're over 524. You can't get the, uh, and you could get those cards, sorry, let me finish this, this thought first. If you could get all of the Chase Ultimate Reward Point earning cards if you're over 524, only in the banks if you are pre-approved. So if you go to the branch, the Chase branch, you could get the Chase Freedom Unlimited, Chase Freedom, Chase Sapphire Preferred, Chase Sapphire Reserve, Chase Inc. Preferred, Chase Inc. Cash, Chase Inc. Unlimited. You can get all those cards if you're over 524, but only if you're pre-approved. So I don't recommend going to a Chase branch and applying for those cards without knowing that you are pre-approved first. Because you don't want to get a hard pull uh, if you're not pre-approved. Um, so to answer your question, it's not just business cards. You can get business cards, but you could also get the other Chase cards as well. Uh, Dustin says, I want to go to Giraffe Manor and South Africa on a safari. That's a bucket list item. Leaving Monday to Tampa. That's awesome, Dustin. Uh, you're going to have a great time in Tampa. <clears throat> I actually lived there for four years. I went to University of Tampa really awesome city i'm sure you probably already have it planned but definitely go to clearwater beach i've been to a lot of beaches and clearwater beach about 15 minutes away from the city of tampa the most beautiful beach in america by far we were just in key west key west was like you know pretty nice beach but clearwater's uh, clearwater in tampa nicest beach and south africa sounds like an awesome Awesome, awesome trip as well, uh, Giraffe Manor. Um, my wife and I, we actually went to South Africa for our one year anniversary. We went to Cape Town <clears throat> and we rented a car from Cape Town and drove the garden route to Plettenberg. We did the highest uh, bungee jump in the world. That was really cool. Um, but yeah, um, South Africa seems awesome. Uh, and Dustin asks, next card on your wish list? Great question. So when I get back to um, back home after this trip, depending on if there's any elevated sign-up bonuses, I might go for those because I am due. I'm like just about at that 90-day mark to get a new credit card. And I might go for the... Um, <clears throat> What I, I wrote, I'm drawing a blank right now. I was going to go for the, uh, what's it called? The crystal, maybe you can help me out. The crystal, um, Visa crystal. Yeah, all right. So it's the one where you're able to get, uh, if you, you're able to get 
four authorized users and each authorized user gets up to uh, three or four hundred dollars in um, travel credit per year. So that that was the card I was gonna, yes, the CNB Visa Infinite. Yes, that was gonna be on the list um, of cards that I wanted to get. I was gonna check that one out coming up. Um, yeah, that was a card that I've been looking at. Uh, that one, but yeah, I'm gonna try again for uh, to see if I'm pre-approved. Before I, I like look into that card, the CMB Visa Infinite, I'm gonna go to Fort Lauderdale again after the Bahamas and go in the branch again and see if I'm pre-approved because I believe it, it changes every month. And so I went in for March, which is the month that we're in. And then when I get back to Fort Lauderdale, April 2nd, I'm gonna try again to see if I'm pre-approved for any cars and try to get that that ink cash. I'm not gonna give up on that. Uh, Kristen says, um, from the Orlando area, Clearwater is beautiful. Yes, I love Clearwater. Uh, pretty much every weekend when I was going to school at University of Tampa, would always go to Clearwater. So beautiful, white fluffy sand, bright blue water. It's almost like the Caribbean, uh, like Caribbean waters. Really nice. The beach here, is really nice um, here in the Bahamas. So I'm, I'm in uh, Grand Bahama, which uh, is like where Freeport is. The beach here is really nice. The water is really nice. It's, it's I guess it's, it's a beautiful beach. It's just like not perfect like uh, clear water. Um, the only thing I don't like about this beach is that there's a lot of little rocks in the sand and you can't really drag your feet when you walk which is something I guess I like to do otherwise you like kind of stub your toe into all the rocks so you kind of have to lift your feet when you walk um, that's not even a big deal <laughs> that's me being picky um, Samuel says City National Bank Crystal Visa yes thank you for uh, for reminding me of that card. Yeah, that's that's on my list. So when I get back, I haven't really um, been into like the the uh, the card world too much. I'm always looking, but just these past two weeks, or even like two months, it's just been crazy. Um, just from moving, and then going to move, actually moving, settling into my new house, and then a few days later going on this vacation. I haven't really done the proper research that I need to um, on cards. Dustin, do you have any uh, new cards that you're looking to get? I think you just got, what'd you get? The um, PenFed or the Visa? No, you didn't get the PenFed. What did you get? The uh, US Bank, I think you got recently. I forgot. Um, Kristen says, I applied for my Chase Freedom about five weeks ago and was approved. When would you recommend uh, would be a good time to apply for the CSR. Yes, while well, you got, uh, Dustin, you got the um, altitude reserve. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, so back to Kristen's question. That's awesome. You got approved for the Chase Freedom. If you got approved for that, then you're most likely going to get approved for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. And uh, when you're going to apply for the next card, so I. I do a lot of these free car consultations and one of my favorite things about doing them is I get to test a lot the, um, the bank application rules or theories and when people get approved. So technically you can wait, you can actually apply right now since you applied five weeks ago, you got approved five weeks ago, you could wait 30 days between approvals to get new Chase cards. So you can actually apply right now for the CSR and get approved and it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, so as long as you wait 30 days, uh, every 30 days you're allowed to get one um, personal card, one business card, but I recommend waiting a little longer uh, for most people if you have a few cards under your belt, you just don't want to draw any attention to yourself. And if you can wait, then I recommend waiting. Uh, but in your case, if you just got the Chase Freedom card as your first card, then um, as your first card with Chase, then you know you could you could, and you waited five weeks. Uh, I think you can apply right now and still get approved for it. Um, you know, assuming all of the other aspects of your credit are still good. 
Um, you know, I've, I've had people who really needed to get their point right away and they, uh, they applied for the um, like Chase Sapphire preferred card and then got all of the ink cards within 90 days, which is very aggressive. I don't, I don't think um, people should do that, but they really wanted to get it. <clears throat> I recommend waiting ideally at least 90 days between applications. Uh, Kristen says, I did make a mistake though. What was your mistake? that you made. Yeah, so um, I, would, I would recommend, we, oh, after getting approved for the Freedom, one week later I tried applying for the Chase Inc. Unlimited and was denied. Yes, that sounds about right. So if you, you can't get approved for two personal cards within the 30-day period with Chase. So that's one of Chase's rules. You can actually get approved if you are going for business cards uh, for one personal, one business card within a 30-day period, but you can't get two personal cards within a 30-day period. That's probably why you were, well, that is why you were denied for that, uh, for that card um, a week later. So now that you waited uh, five weeks, you could still apply now and, and get approved, you know, if, um, if you think that you'll, you'll meet the minimum spending and everything is good, yeah, I think you could do it now, five weeks later after getting approved. Um, but to answer your question, ideally, I think it's best to wait 90 days. If you have specific travel plans, then you can be a little more aggressive, but uh, as a general rule, I, I like to wait 90 days. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, Kristen says, I wish I knew this before, probably wait a little longer. Yeah, um, no, at least you know this now, and if you are under 524, which you are, you have the whole world of credit cards ahead of you. So um, now you know, and now you could, you know, keep getting Chase cards and, uh, you know, build up, build up your Chase Holding reward points and get good value with the CSR. Uh, Kristen says, free credit card consultation is great. Great expert advice is always good. Yes, uh, so I, that's one of the things I love doing, um, just kind of like a, a good, feel good service that I like to give. I love, it, to me it's kind of like a puzzle when I do the free card consultations. Um, you know, I think, I think in this video too, you might be able to, I might have a link, I'm not sure yet. But if you're watching this live, there might be a link below. If you're watching the replay, then you could, uh, then there'll definitely be a link. But free card consultations, I love doing those because when I first started, I made a ton of mistakes. I wasted a lot of points on redemption that I shouldn't have, and I applied for cards and wasn't able to reach the minimum spending for the Chase Sapphire Prefer card, which is a big mistake. I mentioned that earlier on in the video. So that's why with the free card consultation, I love just pointing you in the right direction, giving you the fundamentals of what to do uh, the foundation of how to build up a sustainable strategy to succeed with travel points to make sure that you'll be able to do this long term so that you're not just in it for the short term and you could screw yourself over not knowing what you're doing which is the mistakes that I made I wish I had somebody who told me you know do this this and this first before doing anything crazy like like getting a platinum card uh, so if you're interested in the free card consultation, uh, click the link below, completely free, and I'll give you kind of the um, you know, first few steps of how to get started or your next move of which card to get depending on which cards you already have, as well as some basic strategy like if you have a certain destination like Europe or China or something like that, then um, you know, I, I, like, I like just helping out with that. Um, it's probably one of my favorite things to do, but unfortunately the past two months I'm really backed up in free card consultations. So if you're watching this and you filled out one of those before, uh, thank you so much for being patient. I'm hopefully going to get back to a stable, regular schedule after this trip and hammer out those free card consultations. Uh, sorry if you're one of the people that I haven't really responded to uh, with the card consultation. I have a long list of them and um, I'm slowly working on them and uh, you know, I'll get to them as soon as possible. And yes, you ask where the 
consultation is. I'm glad you got it. Wow, we are at an hour and 39 minutes, and I don't know how to see who is here. I wish there was a way. Let's see. Live chat, messages are visible. Thank you so much, guys, you know, for being here. I really appreciate all the support. Uh, Lonnie says, Lonnie asks, thanks, Lonnie, for stopping by. Really appreciate you uh, joining the live stream. What are your thoughts on the Barclay Arrival Plus? I love the Barclay Arrival Plus card because it's a free one, uh, free eight hundred dollars, and depending on a person's travel goals, it um, you know it it could be great. It's eight hundred dollars towards anything travel related. I've got the I got the Barclay Arrival Plus card. I think about three times uh, when I first got started with credit cards and travel points back in 2011, it was a free-for-all, it was the Wild West. You could apply for any card you wanted in any order. Multiple times they had the double browser trick. Um, if you're watching this and you remember the double browser trick, let me know, that was awesome. It was, you could get anything. But with the Barclay Rival Plus card, I think it's the best card to get after you complete your 524, just because the Barclay Rival Plus card has a five or six 24 rule you won't get approved for the Barclay Rival Plus card and it kind of varies um, whether it's uh, 524 or 624 it kind of depends um, so yeah is the Barclay Rival Plus card is great I think it's good for Airbnb I've used a lot of Barclay Rival Plus points uh, or Rival miles for Airbnb I've used it for um, like kind of short haul flights I think it's best to use for obscure travel uh, redemptions, not necessarily flights or hotels because you know you could use your hotel points from loyalty programs or flights or you know, uh, for airline miles you know for those and I think like Airbnb and boutique hotels or cruises are great ways to use Barclay Rival plus miles and if you want to go to Disney World, not sure of your plans but just anyone who's watching anyone else, if you want to go to Disney World, you could um, purchase Disney tickets at UndercoverTourist.com, which is a great uh, website to purchase discounted Disney tickets, and it does code as travel for the Barclay Arrival Plus card. So, um, yeah, I, I love the Barclay Arrival Plus card, and I think it should be everybody's first card right after 524, unless you have other uh, plans, you know, with City. I think the first cards people should get after completing their 524 slot is either city because of the 6-6 rule, which means if you've uh, had six inquiries in the past six months, you may not be approved for their cards, or the uh, Barclay Arrival Plus card because they are inquiry sensitive as well with the, I'm gonna call it the 624 rule. Um, you know, you won't be approved for the Barclay Arrival Plus card if you've opened six cards in the past 24 months. Uh, so yeah, answer your question. Love the Barclay Rival Plus card. I think everybody should get it after 524. Uh, Dustin says, lots of great options a few years back. Yeah, I reminisce all the time how good it used to be a while back. And it's just getting stricter and stricter and stricter. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's getting tougher. So we, we have to be more strategic in what cards we get all of our redemptions because these points are getting more and more valuable because they're getting harder and harder to get uh tybin says as much as we love you here you should go enjoy your night we really appreciate you take the time away to do this live stream yeah um that's probably a good idea what time is it it is 9.09, yeah, so there's actually a show every night here at 9.30 p.m. And so I'm probably gonna go catch that with my family. And yeah, guys, thanks so much. Uh, this was a lot of fun. And if you want me to do one of these again, hit that like button. I wanna see some thumbs. And uh, I'll do some more of these live streams like where it's more long form, where we're interacting and you ask questions, I answer. Uh, yeah, this is a lot of fun. So I'm going to give you guys one last tour of where I'm at. 
and then I'll say goodbye. So, how about let's head over to the beach, and I think the Wi-Fi is gonna cut out. So guys, I really appreciate you joining the live stream, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah, Dustin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go have a little drink. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna head over to the beach. I think the Wi-Fi is gonna cut out, so we'll just see how far I could get. See if you guys could come on the beach with me. Yeah, it looks like the Wi Fi is still good. All right, guys. I'm gonna end it here. Thanks again. Really appreciate you guys uh, sticking with me during this live stream. More videos to come. Have a good night.